Hello everybody and welcome to this presentation for a harmonic balance approach for designing compliant mechanical systems with nonlinear periodic motions. Oscillations are everywhere in our daily lives. For example, the vibrations of music instruments generate sound. A swing oscillates back and forth like a pendulum and surface ripples due to a droplet impact propagate due to vertical oscillations. Oscillations also play a paramount role in engineering and are, for example, at the center of turbines, combustion engines and other machines that produce periodic motion. In contrast to the controlled oscillations in such rigidly articulated systems, it is typically a primary design goal to suppress vibrations due to structural deformations. Otherwise, resonance can lead to rapidly growing amplitudes and ultimately catastrophic failure, such as in this famous example of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. When we look at nature, however, we see many examples of biomechanical systems that exploit large amplitude oscillations for efficient legged locomotion or flapping flight. Indeed, some of these biomechanical principles have been successfully translated into robotics applications that leverage large amplitude oscillations. While these results here are very impressive, they have been laboriously designed by teams of experts using time-consuming trial and error approaches. But even for seemingly simple cases, finding the right design parameters can be very difficult. In this example, we seek to find weights for three masses such that, when driven by an external force with fixed frequency, we obtain large amplitude oscillations at the tail. It can be seen that the simple solutions of equal mass distribution, shown in the middle, and mass concentration at the tail, shown to the right, do not lead to the desired effect. Nevertheless, there exists a distribution that leads to substantial motion amplification, but it is not exactly a simple or obvious one. With this motivation, the goal of our work is to develop a computational design tool for nonlinear mechanical systems that exhibit desired large amplitude oscillations. Now, there are essentially three main challenges that we have to overcome. First, there's the question of how to simulate nonlinear periodic motions. A standard approach would be to use time domain methods such as Newmark. With those methods, however, we must simulate the entire transient process until periodic motion is obtained, and this can take a very long time to compute. Second, we must be able to predict how the parameters of a given design affect its motion at steady state. And third, we would like to automatically discover those parameter values that best approximate user-provided target behavior. To address these challenges, we propose a frequency space approach based on the harmonic balance method that allows for direct computation of steady state periodic motions without having to simulate the entire transient process. We furthermore propose an approach based on frequency space sensitivity analysis to determine how changes in design parameters induce changes in steady state motion. And finally, we develop forward exploration and inverse design tools based on frequency space simulation and sensitivity analysis. Our work has close ties to several existing fields in graphics and engineering. For example, computational motion design for mechanical systems has been the subject of research in our community for quite some time now. Few works from the graphics community on fabrication-oriented design have considered dynamics so far. These two works here are exceptions to this rule, but their goal is not to create periodic motions. Perhaps more closely related to our effort is the recent work by Hoshiari et al. on motion control for robotic characters. While they also predict oscillations induced by external forcing, their goal is to suppress vibrations by optimizing actuation parameters. In contrast, we aim at generating large amplitude oscillations by optimizing for shape, mass, and material parameters. While the study of vibrations is fundamental for structural dynamics, the vast majority of existing methods are based on linear models, which are sufficiently accurate for small amplitude oscillations. Nevertheless, some applications require nonlinear analysis, and the harmonic balance method has shown its effectiveness in this context both for simulation and optimization-based design. But apart from differences in application, 
All of the existing work that we are aware of aims at preventing vibrations, whereas our goal is to encourage large amplitude oscillations. To describe our method, I'll start with a brief outline of the harmonic balance method and explain how to obtain the governing equations of motion in frequency space. We'll then talk about computational design based on HBM, looking at design objectives and at how to compute derivatives of steady state motion with respect to design parameters. Finally, we will look at examples that illustrate how these components can be combined for forward and inverse design tasks. Okay, so let's start with the dynamic equilibrium equations for a nonlinear mechanical system in the time domain, where x is a vector of nodal positions, fx is a periodic driving force, and fint are elastic internal forces. Furthermore, m and d are mass and damping matrices, respectively. Since we are only interested in steady state solutions for x and f, which by definition are periodic functions, we can express them in frequency space using Fourier series, where S and C are vectors of Fourier coefficients for the trigonometric basis functions, the so-called harmonics. In practice, we only use a finite number of harmonics and truncate the series after NH terms. We can rewrite these truncated Fourier series in a more compact form by introducing the orthogonal trigonometric basis matrix Q and by stacking up all Fourier coefficients into two vectors, Z for positions and B for forces. It's worth noting that the length of these vectors is 2NH plus 1 times the number of degrees of freedom of the mechanical system. We use between 3 and 7 harmonics which leads to roughly two to five times as many variables as there are degrees of freedom in the mechanical system. Now to obtain the equations of motion in frequency space, we perform a so-called Galerkin projection that in the interest of time, I'll only sketch here briefly. We first insert the truncated series into the time domain equations of motion, then integrate the resulting expressions over the period of the system and finally project onto the trigonometric basis Q. Due to the orthogonality of Q, the time dependence disappears and we obtain equations of motion in frequency space that do not depend on time anymore. Here, the linear term A includes contributions from inertia and damping, and B holds all uh, nonlinear contributions from internal and external forces. These frequency space equations of motions, which we also denote by h of z omega is equal to zero, are a system of nonlinear equations that we can solve with Newton's method to obtain the steady state motion of the mechanical system. And that is pretty much the essence of the harmonic balance method. But what is this all good for? Again, HBM is a nonlinear frequency space method that allows us to directly compute steady state motion. This simple example here demonstrates its advantages compared to two alternative approaches, a nonlinear time domain method and a linear frequency space method. The nonlinear time domain method, Newmark in this case, must simulate the entire transient process until periodic motion is reached. This process can take a very long time to compute, 12 minutes for this example. By contrast, Linear modal analysis returns steady state motion almost immediately, but the linearization leads to large deformations and fails to capture the characteristics of the ground truth motion. So to summarize, whereas time domain methods are very slow and linear frequency space approaches are very inaccurate, HBM allows us to efficiently compute accurate steady state solutions for nonlinear mechanical systems. And this is why we use it as a basis for our computational design method that I'll describe next. We start by looking at how users specify target behavior through design objectives, and then turn to the question of how to improve the design in order to better approximate the desired behavior. A direct and intuitive way of specifying desired behavior is to ask that selected parts of the mechanical system for example, the foot of a mechanical leg or some other end effector should follow a user-provided target trajectory. To this end, we convert the user-provided trajectory to frequency space and define an objective function that penalizes differences in Fourier coefficients between current and target trajectories. 
In practice, we also have to remove phase offsets between the trajectories, which makes things slightly more complex, but the principle remains the same. With our second design objective, we would like to explicitly encourage large amplitude motion, which raises the questions of how to measure amplitude to begin with. For a single degree of freedom oscillator, it is clear that amplitude is simply the maximum displacement for a given period of time. But even for a single node in 3D, things are not that clear anymore. And for this reason, we quantify the magnitude of motion for a given vertex as the distance traveled within one period in the time domain. Instead of integrating velocity, we simply compute the length of the piecewise linear trajectory in the time domain, which requires an inverse Fourier transform. Finally, we defined the amplitude objective as the squared difference between the current amplitude and a given target amplitude. We combine these design objectives into a function f that we seek to minimize with respect to a set of design parameters p that can include shape, mass, and stiffness, for example. To this end, we must compute the gradient of f with respect to p. Since the choice of p completely determines the steady state motion z, the objective gradient takes on this form here, in which we have the direct derivatives of f with respect to z and p, which are easy to compute, and the derivatives of z with respect to p, which is a priori unknown. To arrive at an expression for dz dp, we require that any change in design parameters should lead to a corresponding change in Fourier coefficients such that the system is again in dynamic equilibrium. This is equivalent to asking that the total derivative of h with respect to p should be zero, and once we expand this expression into partial derivatives, we obtain a linear system of equations for dz dp that we solve to obtain the so-called sensitivity matrix S. This frequency space design sensitivity matrix forms the basis for our forward and inverse design tools that I'll explain next in the context of a set of examples. The sensitivity matrix provides an efficient tool for interactive exploration of the design space. In this example, the user explores parameter changes for nodal masses as well as the driving amplitude and offset for the two feet. The predicted change in steady state motion computed using the sensitivity matrix, is shown immediately while the user changes the sliders. After larger parameter changes, the user invokes an update operation that leads to a full re-simulation with new parameters and recomputation of the sensitivity matrix. This process takes about three seconds for this example. In addition to forward exploration, we can also use the sensitivity matrix for gradient-based minimization of the design objective, allowing us to compute optimal design parameters in a fully automatic way. This example shows an instance of this inverse design approach, where we use the trajectory matching objective to find design parameters for a mechanical ostrich leg that best approximate the user-provided target trajectories for the foot and ankle joints, shown in blue here. The design parameters here are additional weights attached to the joints. As can be seen in this video, the initial design produces trajectories, shown in green, that correspond to simple reciprocating motion along one-dimensional curves. After optimization, the resulting motion accurately tracks the trajectories for both ankle and toe. This example here illustrates inverse design with our amplitude objective on a set of compliant dragon wings modeled using discrete shells. We again optimize for additional weights attached to the trailing edge of the wing that lead to motion amplification at a given input frequency of 2.5 Hz. It can be seen from the video that the motion is significantly amplified after optimization. The frequency response plots shown on the right additionally reveal that the peak resonance frequency is shifted such that it almost coincides with the driving frequency. We finally investigated applications of our approach to material optimization for viscoelastic solids undergoing nonlinear vibrations. In these examples, we optimize per element Young's modulus such as to maximize the amplitude of selected nodes. As can be seen, the optimization discovers material assignments that significantly amplify the motion in both cases. 
To summarize, we presented an optimization-driven frequency space approach for designing mechanical systems that exhibit desired nonlinear oscillations. The results that we've obtained indicate that harmonic balance paired with sensitivity analysis is indeed an efficient and effective combination that enables the construction of powerful forward and inverse design tools. Now, our method currently has some limitations that we would like to address in future work. For one, we use a simple Rayleigh damping model and rather inaccurate ways of measuring damping parameters. While this wasn't much of a restriction for the examples that we created, other applications might require more accurate ways of modeling and measuring damping. An aspect that we haven't addressed at all is contact and friction, which would obviously be important when designing, for instance, robotic legs for locomotion tasks. There are indeed extensions of HBM for contact and friction, but to our knowledge, there is no work on design optimization in this context. Finally, since each mesh vertex is endowed with several Fourier coefficients, the computational cost soon becomes a concern with increasing problem size. Here, it would be interesting to explore subspace methods for HBM that allow us to focus computational efforts on specific spatial frequency bands. Thank you very much for listening.